Welcome to WIMIS 1988 Material Safety Data Sheets. The purpose of this module is to describe the WIMIS 1988 MSDS. After completing this module, you will be able to describe the role of the Material Safety Data Sheet, describe the contents of the Material Safety Data Sheet, and describe the responsibilities of employers and workers in regard to WIMIS 1988 Material Safety Data Sheets. A Material Safety Data Sheet contains information about a single controlled product. It provides information on the product's potential hazards, such as being easily flammable or reactive, and any effects on health, such as being carcinogenic. It also contains information on how to handle, store, and use the product safely, what to expect if the recommendations are not followed, what to do if accidents occur, how to recognize symptoms of overexposure, and what to do if overexposure incidents occur. The Hazardous Products Act and the Controlled Products Regulations place legal requirements on Canadian suppliers and importers of WIMIS controlled products. A Canadian supplier of a controlled product must also transmit an MSDS disclosing prescribed information as a condition of sale. A Canadian importer of any controlled product has to obtain or prepare an MSDS as a condition of importation. Note that an MSDS for a controlled product must not be more than three years old. It is important to familiarize yourself with the MSDS before working with a new product. Match the name on the controlled product's container label to the one on the MSDS. Know the hazards and understand safe handling and storage instructions as well as what to do in an emergency. You should know where the MSDS are stored at your workplace to allow you to access them quickly when needed. How do you find information on the MSDS? There are nine required categories of information that must be present on an MSDS. Here is the list of sections. Let's work through the sections of an MSDS. The Product Information section is used to provide product identifiers such as chemical and common names, and manufacturer and supplier contact information such as names, addresses, and emergency phone numbers. The Hazardous Ingredients section is used to provide a list of hazardous ingredients and other information such as the percentage of each ingredient, their CAS registry numbers, and their degree of hazard. The Physical Data section is used to provide information concerning the product's physical state such as appearance, color, odor, odor threshold, pH and specific gravity, as well as whether the product is a solid, liquid, or gas. The Fire or Explosion Hazard Data section is used to provide information concerning the product's flammability such as flash point, auto ignition temperature, and upper and lower flammable limits. It also addresses the product's explosion hazard or other sensitivities. The Reactivity Data section is used to provide information on the product's reactivity and chemical stability, possible hazardous reactions, conditions to avoid, incompatible products, and any hazardous decomposition products. The Toxicological Properties section is used to provide information on the product's routes of exposure and toxic health effects, including immediate effects, delayed effects, and chronic effects from short-term and long-term exposure. The Preventive Measures section is used to provide information on how to prevent accidental release of the product and exposure of personnel. Information can include requirements for shipping, storing, handling, and PPE as well as procedures for engineering controls, emergency response, spill control, and waste disposal. The First Aid Measures section is used to provide information on specific first aid measures that need to be followed in the event of exposure. The First Aid Measures can be specific to the different routes of exposure, which are inhalation, skin contact, eye contact, and ingestion. The Preparation Information section is used to provide the name and contact information of the persons responsible for preparation and the date of preparation of the MSDS. 
MSDSs can look different because the format is left up to the manufacturer or supplier who writes the MSDS, and some put more details than what is required. However, the information for the nine required categories must always be included. Note that an MSDS prepared using the 16 heading format is acceptable as long as two conditions are met. First, all the required information specified under the regulations must be addressed. All headings and subheadings on the MSDS must provide the required information or state that the information is not available or not applicable, whichever is appropriate. Second, the statement, This product has been classified in accordance with the hazard criteria of the CPR and the MSDS contains all of the information required by the CPR, must appear under the section heading Regulatory Information. Employers are responsible to ensure all controlled products entering the workplace come with an up-to-date MSDS, and the MSDS is readily available to workers who might be exposed to the hazardous product, and to any health and safety committee or representative. If a controlled product is made in the workplace, the employer has a duty to prepare an MSDS for any of the product. Additionally, Employers may make the MSDS information available on a computer or device, as long as all employees are trained on how to use the computer or device storing the MSDS, all employees have access to and are trained on how to use the computer or device storing the MSDS, the computer or device storing the MSDS is kept in a working order, and the employer makes a hard copy of the MSDS available to the employee or health and safety committee, or representative upon request. In review, you can think of the MSDS as having four main purposes. It provides information on product and supplier identification, physical and health hazards, exposure prevention, and incident response measures and procedures for various situations. This concludes WIMIS 1988 Material Safety Data Sheets. Please complete the short quiz before continuing.